Peace. Yo, today I wanted to just go into the science of supreme mathematics. Um, a lot of people are interested to find out what it is, how do you use them, blah, 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 blah. Well, first of all, supreme mathematics is nothing that's new. It's nothing made up. Um, all it actually is is identifying natural processes in nature and assigning qualities to those particular natural processes. For example, we teach that each number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 0, has a certain quality to it. It doesn't just represent a quantity, but it represents a certain quality. All of those qualities are in a sequential order. Or when we say something is taken from knowledge to born, or it goes from a process of this particular point to that particular point in order to be created or to born itself or to be brought forth into existence, there's a sequence of events that takes place along its growth and development process. Everything in creation follows the same exact sequence of events. We say it's knowledge to born. So what do we mean by that? The first aspect of creation, or one, is symbolic to knowledge. Knowledge means to know. It also means to be aware. It also represents consciousness. It also represents the essence or the principalities of all people, places, and things. What do I mean by that? When you look at anything <clears throat> that has existed, does exist, and will exist, everything has an essential reality of why it's here. It has essential properties. It has an essential function of why it is what it actually is. That is the knowledge of what it is. That's the consciousness. That is the information or the essence of what something is. For example, look at bleach. Bleach has a certain chemical composition, and it's used as a cleaning agent. It may be used for other different things, but it's not used for ingestion. You're not supposed to drink a 40-ounce bleach. When you identify the properties of what bleach was created to do, then you knowledge or acknowledge why it's actually here. That is the foundation. That is the essence of what bleach is here and what it's designed to do, which means you have identified its functions, you've identified its properties, and you know why it's here. So regardless if somebody knew what supreme mathematics is or not, a person naturally follows the, this, this process of thought. They acknowledge something for what it is first and foremost before they can actually utilize it or make a decision based upon what it is that they know. Now we're getting into what wisdom is. Wisdom is a second aspect of creation. Wisdom is discernment. It's also sagacity, or it's also a person's ability to judge based upon what they know. You can't be wise unless you know something first. You know what I'm saying? So once you are informed or you have information or you are aware of what something is, now you move into motion. You are going to be forced to make a decision based upon what you know because there's a responsibility with what you know. Responsibility has two words in it, respond and ability. So why should you respond? Well, you have an ability now. You know something. So you're going to be forced into situations where you're going to have to respond to a situation or respond to bringing forth a solution based upon your ability. Your ability, you're able because you know. That is the second aspect of creation. That's wisdom. Now you're either going to be forced to be wise based upon what you know or you're going to be foolish. But either way about it, regardless, the second part or the second component of what you know is wisdom. You're going to be forced to make a decision. Once you make that decision, whether, regardless of what it is, now you're going to start to comprehend what it is you knew in the first place and what you actually did. So three is a, is a combination of one and two. That's knowledge and wisdom. So once you're aware of something or you get some information, you're going to be forced to use it. Whatever decision you choose to make based upon what you know, you're going to get a mental picture or start to understand or comprehend what it is you knew in the first place and what you actually did, the decision that you actually made. Now, like I said, supreme mathematics, this is not nothing made up. These are all natural processes of thought. So regardless if somebody ever came across the nation of gods and earths or what is supreme mathematics, they're still going to utilize this process of thought. They're still going to go through this sequence of events 
for them to arrive at what it is that they see. Now, people that don't bear witness to this process, they're still going to bear witness to it eventually. For example, like I said, you got to get the knowledge first before you can be wise or before you make decisions. Always try to know as much as you can before you just make a decision because it may, it's not going to be wise if you don't do that. Now, that's one and two. Now, suppose you reversed it and said wisdom knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Or you're doing things without you not having no knowledge of what you're doing in the first place. You're doing wisdom knowledge. What's that? It's still going to create an understanding, but the understanding that's, that's going to be created out of that is going to be a misunderstanding because the proper process or sequence of events wasn't actually followed. And all of y'all can bear witness to that. There's been times when I myself have done something and then I found out, or then it's like, oh, now I know. But I had to get a misunderstanding first before I understood. You see what I'm saying? So like I'm saying, with Supreme Mathematics, it's just identifying natural processes and assigning qualities to those natural processes in order for us to get a greater perspective of what is actually going on within ourselves and what's going on in the world around us. That's just knowledge and wisdom and understanding that I'm building about right now. This is part one, too. The next part I'm going to go into is culture freedom, or culture, as some gods and nurses just deal with, power refinement, or just power, as some gods deal with, and equality. So the first thing in this part that, I, that I'm building about is just knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Identifying that all life processes go according to knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. One, two, and three. Consciousness, or identifying the principalities, or the way in which something functions as its essence. That function moving into motion to validate what it actually was in the first place. And you getting the understanding or comprehending what it actually was in the first place and why it functioned the way that it functioned. That's knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. So with that said, i just add on a little later about culture or culture freedom. Power or power refinement and equality. Peace.